In this lecture, we're going to provide you a, an overview of the vasculature within the pelvis so that in the subsequent lectures when we reference an artery, you'll know where it, is, where it comes from, where it's traveling. And so we're really trying to give you an idea of the spatial relationship uh, of the different arteries in the pelvis. And my suggestion is, this is these are pretty uh, difficult structures to ID in a cadaver lab. So if you're taking a course where you have to do dissections, I would suggest you really spend some time kind of running through these different arteries on different cadavers because there's a lot of variation within real life uh, in real life in these uh, arteries and where they branch from and where they go. So that that would be my suggestion because these can be difficult questions on a lab practical. So just a, this is the main diagram we're going to be using. So <clears throat> the main uh, supply of the artery of the arterial supply in the pelvis is really going to be from the internal iliac artery. So you have the common iliac here, and then you have the external iliac, which goes and forms the femoral artery in the in the lower limb, and then you have the internal iliac here. What you have is two branches or two divisions. You have the posterior division, which only has three branches, and then you have the anterior division, which comes out this way, and forms several several branches that uh, go on to supply the viscera of the pelvis. So we'll start with the posterior division, because since there's only three, there's only three arteries in the uh, posterior division. And then the first one is the iliolumbar. So it's not shown, this is the one artery that's not really shown very well on this, so I'll draw it in for you. It comes off the posterior division, and it, kind of, and it actually travels up superior. It doesn't even really go in the pelvis. It comes back up uh, superiorly, and it gives off a lumbar branch which kind of helps supply the, the lumbar vertebrae. And then it gives a, an iliac uh, branch, which goes out this way and helps uh, supply uh, structures in the iliac bone region. Um, and another th thing is, it, is here's your psoas major muscle, and it travels just deep to that psoas major muscle. So the lateral sacral, you can see it here. Uh, it comes off and goes branches out posteriorly. Um, it's medial and anterior to the sacral plexus. So here's the branches of the sacral plexus here. So it's medial um, and anterior to that. It has spinal branches that pass through the foramen here, the, the different sacral uh, foramina here. And they will supply the meninges and the roots of the uh, sacral nerves, which are coming down here from the spinal cord and then traveling through the foramina. Um, and then those, they'll have branches that will kind of exit back, th th exit this space and then back through the posterior sacral foramen to come back into the pelvis. So the superior gluteal artery is this large branch here coming off the posterior division. And it goes through two, goes in between two nervous structures. So you have the S1 spinal nerve here, and then you have the lumbosacral trunk, which is traveling here. So it's tra as you can see here, it's kind of marked in this grayish looking structure here. And it travels just bet between those two. And it exits the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen, superior to the piriformis muscle. And we'll show you that here. So here's your piriformis muscle. Piriformis muscle is a major landmark in the hip region. We'll go over more of this in the uh, uh, lower limb uh, lecture series. And so coming up here is the superior gluteal, gluteal artery, which exits through the greater sciatic foramen, which is kind of in this area here. And then that goes on to provide blood supply to the gluteal muscles within the region. So now the anterior division. Um, this is the full table. It's in your text. It, it contains all the branches of the anterior division. And we're going to walk through each one individually uh, and then show you on the diagram here where they travel in relation to other structures. So we, first we have the inferior gluteal. So we have the superior gluteal here. So that's the superior. And then we have the inferior gluteal, which is here. So inferior. And that makes sense. It's just, it's in the name, just inferior to the superior gluteal. And it runs between the first and the second sacral nerve. So here's that first sac that S1 spinal nerve again. And then it, you can't see it. It's behind the rectum here. It's, so it would be the second. So if I draw it here, so you have S1 here, S2 here, and then you have your lumbosacral trunk sacral trunk here. So your superior gluteal dives in between these two here. So that's superior. And then you have your inferior gluteal which dives between these structures here. So it goes this way and dives in between the S1 and the S2. So that's your inferior. 
And then to show you on this side, so here again, here's your piriformis, so where it exits the pelvis. And so it exits the pelvis here. So here it is right here. That's the inferior gluteal. Remember, your superior gluteal is up here, just superior to the piriformis. Inferior gluteal, inferior to the piriformis. Um, and it exits out the inf greater sciatic foramen as well. So even though they travel in different relations to this piriformis, they both ex both superior and inferior gluteal exit the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen. So the internal pudendal, so just to run this, superior gluteal is here. Then you have inferior gluteal here. And then we go just down the line here. So this is pudent internal pudendal. Okay, so this tra travels adjacent to the sacral uh, spinal nerves here as well, and it exits the pelvis again via that greater sciatic foramen with the uh, same foramen as, as the superior and inferior gluteal, and it exits between the piriformis and the coccygeus uh, muscles. So we'll show that here. So here's your pudendal right here. So and you can see it here exiting the greater sciatic foramen, just inferior to your piriformis muscle here. And then what happens is, is it travels out here in the hip region for a little bit, and then, it ent and then it dives back in and enters the foramen via the lesser sciatic foramen. So it goes through both foramens. It comes out through the greater sciatic foramen, travels in the hip for region for uh, a little bit, and then it goes back in to the perineum via the lesser sciatic foramen. So the umbilical artery. Uh, the umbilical artery, there's a proximal part which gives off the superior vesicle artery. Um, supplying the superior part of the bladder. So if we show that here, so th again, this is our superior gluteal, inferior glute gluteal. Here's your pudendal here. And again, it, how I'm going through down the line, if you, it, when I'm talking about if you go into the cadaver lab, this is a great thing to do is you just go down the line and uh, ID every single artery over and over again. And you, there's no way you'll miss any of these questions then as a result. So the umbilical artery, let's talk about it. So you have the, it's this branch, kind of this stump sticking off the anterior division here. So here's your umbilical artery. Okay, so that's your umbilical. And like I said, it gives off the superior vesicle, which is this branch right here. You can see it right here. It's traveling in like this and then supplying the bladder right here. Okay, and that supplies the superior part of the bladder. So if that gets, if you have a blockage in that artery, you'll have a major infarction, more so in the superior portion of the bladder. In the males, you also have um, the artery to the vas, uh, to the vas deferens or ductus deferens coming off the umbilical artery. Also, the artery going to the seminal vesicle, and then you also have an artery going to the lower part of the ureter and the bladder. Distal part of the umbilical artery is it travels into the. Uh, uh, abdominal wall here and then it gets obliterated um, and forms that umbilical ligament, medial umbilical ligament like we talked about in the abdomen. Uh, the obturator artery. So the obturator artery, this is pretty simple to ID in the body. It's So you have your obturator nerve here, so this is your nerve. And then you have your obturator artery here traveling right here with it. So that's your artery. So same name as the nerve, and they both <clears throat> exit the pelvis via the upper area of the ob obturator foramen, and then w and then beyond that they divide into the anterior and posterior branches of the artery to go and supply the lower limb. The posterior branch gives off an this is a clinically important because it gives off an acetabular branch which travels through the acetabular notch and then the ligamentum capitis femoris to reach the top of the femoral head. So you have the femoral head here, and here's the neck. And then the greater trochanter, lesser trochanter, and then the shaft of the femur. So it travels, so this artery they're referring to here travels here and enters the head of the femur to supply this area. And we'll talk more about this in the lower limb lectures, but this is important because you can, this can lead to necrosis of the femoral head. So inferior vesicle artery, so it's uh, the male counterpart to the vaginal artery in the female. Um, and it comes off the anterior division as well, and you can see it here. Um, your inferior vesicle. So your superior vesicle was up here, supplying this the superior portion of the bladder. So that's the superior uh, vesicle, inferior vesicle here. 
traveling down and supplying the lower portion of the bladder. It also it provides blood supply to many other structures as well, such as the prostate gland, the seminal vesicles, ductus deferens, lower part of the ureter, and the pelvis. And as you can see here is the ureter coming through here. So in the female, we have the vaginal artery, which can also arise. It usually comes off the anterior division of the internal iliac, but it can also arise off the uterine artery. So in an important uh, distinction to make here is, so you have this in this diagram here, you have the ureter here traveling, and then you have the vaginal artery here coming down here to supply the vaginal canal. Um, so you can see it branching off here and then traveling down here. And an important note about the vaginal artery is it forms anastomoses in the median plane uh, to form anterior and posterior zagus arteries of the vagina, which kind of helps just form collateral blood supply. The vagina is a very well vascularized, or vascularized organ. When, you, when they do a hysterectomy, it often heals very well um, because of its really rich blood supply. So then you have uh, middle rectal, which is coming, we're getting towards the end here of all these branches. Um, and so you have this middle rectal artery here it comes off, kind of swings off the anterior uh, division right here, and it supplies the lower part of the rectum and then the upper part of the anal canal. So then the uterine artery, again, this is important. We'll get into this more in the uh, subsequent lectures, but you want to talk about it in relation to the ureter. And so it's the female counterpart to the artery of the ductus uh, deferens. And so it runs off this branch here, and so you can see, again, here's the ureter here traveling in here and marked by the arrow and then you have the uterine artery traveling in here and it runs medially in the base of the broad ligament to reach the junction of the cervix in the body of the uterus and it runs superior and adjacent to the lateral fornix of the vagina it anastomoses with the ovarian artery to help provide collateral circulation and then it bifurcates into the superior branch that supplies the fundus of the uterus and then it has a vaginal branch that supplies the cervix and the cervix in the vagina. So the uterine artery is both responsible for su supplying the, the uterus and also for supplying the vagina, as well, helping supply the vagina as well. So the vagina, in a sense, has a dual blood supply, the vaginal artery and then branches of the uterine artery as well. And an important, this is, gives you, we'll talk more about this in subsequent lectures as well, but this, this ureter is kind of that water under the bridge concept. So you have the uterine, uterine, uterine artery traveling over, and you can see the cross right here, traveling over the, the ureter to give you that water under the bridge. The water is the urine in the ureter, and then the bridge is the uterine artery traveling over it. So now that we've finished the branches of the anterior and posterior divisions of the internal, internal iliac artery, we'll finish off with a couple more kind of lower yield arteries, but still important to know. So the median sacral artery, there's a, it's just a single artery, and you can see it here, branching off the bifurcation of the uh, abdominal aorta, um, and it descends down the anterior surface of the sacrum, and it supplies the posterior rectum. The superior rectal artery is the continuation of the uh, inferior mesenteric so up here you would have the IMA that comes off and it gives you know its branches out here to the gut and then it can, keeps coming down and then it continues we'll join it here with the inferior uh, superior, superior rectal artery here which is located right here so it, it turns into the superior rectal artery and that's the terminal branch of the inferior mesenteric and of course that supplies the rectum so we have the ovarian artery, which is important to discuss because it actually originates in the abdomen. Um, it, bran it branches um, directly off the abdominal artery or abdominal aorta at the level of the L2 vertebrae. So you can see it here, traveling off here and then going down. So this is your L2 vertebral level. And it crosses over the proximal end of the external iliac and then travels uh, in the suspensory ligament. So it comes down here. And then if, if you can see the uh, iliac here extending out, and then it travels, drapes over that iliac, and then joins in that suspensory ligament of the ovary to reach the ovary. So the venous drainage, just to have show the diagram, it really it just it's the same names as the artery correspond, corresponding to the arterial supply, makes it back up to the uh, common iliac veins and then back into the uh, inferior vena cava. 
just a clinical application here. The re we want to talk about pelvic fractures. And the reason we held off on pelvic fractures, uh, this part of the discussion of pelvic fractures, instead of in the osteology lecture, is because a big thing is that uh, pelvic fractures are notorious for uh, bleeding very heavily. Um, in a significant amount of patients, especially into the retroperitoneal space, which a retroperitoneal hematoma is a serious um, complication that needs it, that you definitely don't want to let it go. Um, they could have massive blood loss, which usually results from injury to the superior gluteal artery and or the branches from the anterior division of the internal iliac. So those are the, ar the major arteries that are um, the responsible for this massive bleeding, superior gluteal and then also the anterior division of the in internal iliac. The superior gluteal is especially susceptible to injury because of its, it being adjacent to the SI joint, which would be out here. So if you have the sacrum kind of coming in here like this, and then you have your superior gluteal here. So if you have a fracture in this SI joint or in that region of the pelvis, it can uh, lacerate the superior gluteal artery. Uh, and then the in internal pudendal artery injury occurs uh, often as well because it travels just uh, inferior to this piriformis muscle. So here's the pudendal here. And you have this sharp fascia of the piriformis, which then can lacerate the internal pudendal artery as well. Um, the arterial injuries are more common with open pelvic fractures, um, which are more serious fractures, so that isn't too surprising. And then these fractures are actually often, they're managed by interventional radiology. And what they do is they perform a transcatheter embolization which is where they throw they thread a catheter up um, through an artery, and th they bring it into the internal iliac artery, and then they do a embolization via that catheter of the internal iliac to stop the bleeding. So really, they what they do is they kind of they treat the bleeding at the main source. So the internal iliac is kind of the main source of all these arteries, because you may you may not necessarily know which artery is injured, or you could have multiple arteries that are injured, and since they all come from this common source, the internal iliac. And so they go in and they kind of hit that one major source, the internal iliac, in the hopes that it'll help stop the bleeding in any uh, distal injury to any arterial supply. And that wraps up our discussion of uh, the arterial supply in the pelvic region.